everybody was hustling and everybody was seeing how they were connected in some way or another with either the patriarchs or the Genovese. I ran the drug entity for life. And then you have a guy who ran this entity for life. And that guy who ran that entity for life. I sold drugs to a three thousand gallons of PCP, been kidnapped twice, shootouts with the police. No, I didn't look at it as like that. It was, oh, that's my dad. That's my grandpa. This is, you know what I mean? This is my family. Yeah. I was getting shot at with AKs, you know, shit like that. You know, turn the camera. That's the Air Lady and Mount Carmel Club where I'll pull those They thought inside when they make the sausage, they grind up the sausage meat. They thought maybe he was ground up inside the sausage meat because my father in law hated this man. He was the one who was my brother in law. So they thought maybe this guy ground him up in the sausage. Stop glorifying rats. Now, you're police. Now, let me ask you this. If you do an arrest and if someone just gives up their people, like, you know, you still want to see integrity, you know, like, where does that come from coming from the, the police angle? What's going on, everyone? Happy Halloween. I was bored out of my mind today, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do a show, and the reason why Mike is absent is, uh, well, you know me, 42, no kids, uh, you know, but Mike's got a family, beautiful family with children, so he's with them, though, on Halloween. So uh, I'm going to miss you, though, Mike. I'll see how I hold this one down. What this show is, though, basically is, uh, I don't know who else is just bored out there, but we're just going to talk about whatever we want. Someone in the chat might say, yeah, let's bullshit about this or whatever. I looked what happened in Mafia times on Halloween and uh, Nicky Scarfo Jr. That, that is the anniversary of uh, him getting shot. Let me show you real quick. Because remember me in the NYC crime spot did Friday the 13th show? Not much though I was able to find on Halloween. But uh, there he is right there, Nicky Scarfo Jr. And um, if you look way back, I did a video on the Philly tour because I'm not too far away from there. Well, that's the original picture. And then I edited it up like that but um this is where he was shot let me get my glasses real quick yeah dante and luigi's restaurant in south philly you know what i've been thinking though too we're gonna do a lot of philly stuff though too because i mean i'm right by it and i have a lot of footage from when i was out there i lived out there too so um on snyder avenue in south boston so uh that's another one that I like to do. And there's a lot of lot of history out there, not just with Nicky Scarfo and Merlino and all them too, but the Rick Beanies, I'm sure you heard about them. NYC Crime Sot was talking about them. Who we got in the comments real quick. Guys, if this is your first time here, uh, give us a like and uh, subscribe. And I uh, really appreciate it. We've been growing. And uh, ever since really, the, you know, I went on NYC Crime Spot, I noticed like after I went on that though, a lot, you know, the show really started though growing. And I just want to thank you so much to Brett. He's the man uh, who's actually become a good friend. And uh, I don't talk to a lot of people, though, but I talk to Brett, and I appreciate that. And uh, thank you for that, brother. All right. Let's hold it down. What's up? Let's let's, let's give a load to everyone in here. What's up, OG? OG's watching, though. Don't be bumping in the kids if you're walking around trick-or-treating. I just, Mike, I just went up to Dunkin' Donuts, and I had to go like two miles an hour. Cause and I love it. I want to see kids out knocking on doors like it should be. Not this fucking trunk or treat. We got to meet here now, you know. I mean, I, it's it's just a different world. Twenty years ago, man. No, not twenty years ago. What am I now? Forty two. Jesus. So uh, thirty six years ago, thirty five years ago, or whatever the fuck. Like when we were doing it, uh, you know, it was the old school method. Remember mischief night? You know, we flipped over car. We used to flip it up on uh, Peachy, our buddy Peach. If you know that that Facebook thumbnail, it's me and him with the screw face shirt. Screw face is our best friend who just passed away, sadly. But um, yeah, this guy fucking opened up a door, <laughs> opened up a house while they were eating dinner and threw a quarter stick in the house and ran off. It was fucking bad. But my point being is, I like seeing the kids back on the street. Uh, it, it 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 makes my heart smile, you know, because you don't see that anymore, really. It's at least around in this in these these neighborhoods, it used to just you used to look out the back window in the alley, and it was always always people playing until the sun came home. But it is what it is. But that warmed my heart. See, like there's no more little league even. Like you know, we used to have parades. We're nothing gone. Everybody's afraid. But it was just nice though to see uh, people 
actually trick or treating. All right, who we got? Who we got? There he is. What's up, Brett? My man. Ghost is in the house. What's up, Ghost? Oh, he's there. Farmer 81. What's going on? Happy Halloween. Hey, bro. My oldest boy turns 20. Wow. Congratulations to Joey Frakes. His, uh, happy birthday. 21 today, man. Good for you, Joey. That's great, man. Thanks for being here, too. And tell uh, your um, boy that Loomis from Mafia Truth, and I'm sure I can vouch for OG Mike as well, wish him the happiest of birthdays and to stay safe. That's awesome, Joey. Brett is the man. Yeah, no, great guy. Great. He's a real one. You know, he's, uh, yeah, he, like, you know, I'll be talking to him probably till, till I croak. He's a great dude. There he is. Cheers. What's up? Leon, happy Halloween, my man. They trick or treat out there in the Caribbean where you're at. <laughs> Leon lives, uh, it's like interesting. It's different. I want to go out there. Uh, Leon, where are you at again? You know, my brain always fit. Uh, forget shit. Yeah, I hear a lot of kids outside tonight more than the past few years. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Like, at first, I was like, what the fuck? I got to get back home. But I mean, they're a kid. So I put the car in, like, neutral. It was going very slow. Even put the high beams on. And I, I just had a moment. You know, thinking I was like, it just took me back. It was nostalgic. And you just seen all the kids on the street. With, and I was just like, it fucking warmed my heart, man. I mean, we grew up doing that shit. We grew up outside. That's what you're supposed to be outside. Everyone's inside now. And I'm not going to get to conspiracy theory of that, but technology came. This all came. It's to keep everybody possibly inside. I don't know. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm just saying go the fuck outside and play. Get into some fights. Meet some people. How about this guy calls me out yesterday real quick. This And it's funny now. Now I'm actually meeting some cool people verbally too. Someone on a crime channel put up Sammy the Bull was a boxer like that he boxed. And I just wrote, no, he didn't. I mean, yeah, he went and he trained, but I'm saying he didn't box. He didn't have a record. And this guy's like going, oh, hey, he what did he call me? He goes, you're a wannabe Italian. We see you. And he puts any screenshots to show my future. <laughs> so I just wrote back. First off, I'm not Italian. All I'm Irish. Very proud to be fucking Irish and, and Lithuanian. And, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. I went at it though like that. And, but he was very good at breaking my balls. And I was breaking his balls back. And then uh, I said something. And then he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then he totally reverted back to like, dude, I'm sorry, whatever. But uh, he fucking lives in Nanticoke, which is like fucking 15 minutes up. Oh, he said to me, we can meet up if you want. And I wrote back, what are you, fucking 12? But I will. And um, then he's like, I'm in your neighborhood. I go, fucking even better. And uh, I wasn't gonna, man. I'm not fucking 10, 12 years old. But I mean, what the fuck, right? I don't got nothing to, I don't got nothing to lose. But uh, now I, he ends up though being a great fucking guy. We talked to UFC. He fucking, he's from the area. It was just, you know, it was funny. All right. Who else we got here? Not really on the trick or treat. St. Thomas, USVI. So they go to like a trunker type treat thing, right? I'm about to go into a fight. Oh, yeah. What do you mean you're about to go into a fight? No, serious question. I'm about to go into it. Like, you're right now, you're going to watch a fight? Go hard. Fucking enjoy it, Mike. You lucky son of a bitch. I'll hold it down here. But, um, all right, what do we want to talk about today? What do we want to talk about today? So, uh... Today's like, it's a very proud day though for me though, too, today. That's why like I'm looking at, I was like, you know what? I'm looking good today. I'm not going in the middle because I, I got a job today, a real good job that I really wanted. And um, because I'm two years away off the junk, away from Kensington, away from all those places. And uh, it's just amazing. Like, it's incredible because the whole entire time in the past, Whatever I would hear, if I, for, I don't go to meetings really, but like when I used to go to those meetings and I'd hear people like, it's so sunny on this side. I just wanted to fucking break. Cause I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, they weren't as bad as me. Then they don't know how fucking, you know what I mean? That's how we get, but you never know what someone's struggle is, you know? So, you, but the point being is it's just grateful to be here with all of you and uh, everyone who supports the channel. 
because uh, when COVID came and uh, if you were following me from the beginning, you've seen that you might, when I was in my house up in Dallas, up in the mountain and uh, engaged in stuff like that, when that came, I just, uh, yeah, that's when I fell off real bad. And, um, you know, a couple of these, a couple of surgeries to save my leg. And uh, I just really thought, you know, that this wasn't possible or whatever. And now the fact that uh, I got through that hump, that first year is hard, but any, if I could do it, anyone could, it's, it, I'm just very grateful. I really am. And I know people, I, I'm the guy now that I want to, I used to want to punch in the face, but I really am. And uh, cause I missed 20 years of my niece and nephew growing up. Like I wasn't even around at all. Like it was, it's just, you know, but that's what used to always make me keep using. Cause I was embarrassed. You know, everyone's having families. Everyone has, you know, these fucking great careers. And like, I was just embarrassed. So I would just keep, you know, that's what brought me comfort. And uh, I ain't embarrassed anymore. I feel like fucking unstoppable. I feel great. And that's how you should, everyone should fucking feel. You know, we get one go around at this life. One. Um, and I'm just grateful. Because, and now if I go back to doing that, it's a choice. So... I don't deserve nothing, whatever, if I ever go back to doing that. But I'm just grateful, though, to be here. And uh, just thank you all for being here with me. All right. Now that that's out of the way. Who we got? Fuck yeah. Congratulations, bro, on the new gig. Thanks, buddy. You know what? It's actually in the in that field of helping others. Um, I'm working for, like, an addiction center. You know what I mean? So, uh, which is great. Because I... I get, you know, even when I was in there, they used to ask me because I could talk a dog off a meat truck. They used to be like, listen, man, Don or whoever, I'm just making up a name, is about to walk off the mountain. Like, will you go and talk to him and try to keep him here? And like, you know, I was good at that and stuff. And even though I was a mess at the time, but just to be removed and I don't go into those places like, ooh, I'm better than you. I look at everyone who's a patient there and I say, you are me and I am you. And there's no difference at all. There isn't. They just have to get this. And that's, you know, I'm just grateful, man. Blessed. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you, bro. I really do, man. Everyone know who helped out this past year. You, Greg. Uh, dude, I got to, I'll speak to Greg real quick. I have to, I right before this show, I went into the studio. I have to dissect it. I'm going to remember it right after this to figure out how to get that. I thought though that I didn't know he was blocked. I thought when we hit it that it was just um like a timeout though type thing. But I will um get him back in there. I didn't realize that. But thank you to Greg as well. Thank you to everyone. Um it's just the best feeling though about it all though is um for 20 years I couldn't even like do shit. Like my parents are fucking helping me out for fucking 20 years. Like, you know, I would have been in prison definitely if it wasn't for them. Um bailing me out of so many fucking like you know little situations dui i would never be able to pay for that and it's just you know to me i start i got sober because i said you know what man you're being a fucking punk it's time that you fucking take care of them you know and i mean the other way around what the fuck are we doing here and i was just embarrassed but if you're hooked on that stuff it is very very hard to get off <laughs> it really is but um now that i'm blessed though that i have both of them still here it's time that I take care of them. And, you know, and it, I just, it's, it's amazing. It really is. But I don't want to get emotional, but you guys are the best and cheers. Thank you. Another thing too, is I'm not a guy like everyone, everyone could drink around me. Everyone could do whatever around me. I don't judge anyone. I just can't do that stuff because I don't know how to behave. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to behave. So, uh, that's that. Yo, what's up? Yo, I mean, your channel, man, is fire. I'm loving the documentaries, history and organized crime. What's up, Loomis? Listen, tonight's also a drop the link show. If anyone wants to come on and just and start going at it with me, talking about anything, please just say it in the comments. We'll drop the link. Yeah, Mike, you know what? If you're watching, I gave you that link in the text. Could you throw that up in the uh, live chat? And no one feel pressured or whatever, but if someone though wants to come on, you are more than welcome to come on. This is like, you know, just like fan friendly, like everyone around you, everyone, every episode is, you know, we had, a, I was thinking today and cause we're transparent with our subscribers, 
like, you know, me and Mike are talking. And if you just do videos, they stay in the algorithm like a lot longer and grow the channel and stuff. But these lives with you guys are just so fun, you know? So it's, it's, there's Wayne. What's up? It's just, uh, yeah. I see when I read the comments, I forget. Wayne Klingman, what's going on? Guys, get Wayne's books. I got The Buffalo Mob. Wayne's right there. Great book, right? This one right here. Trust me. Bang. And they're great. They're like quick reads. Narco Saints. The Life and Times of Frank Ballesteri. And Wayne, like I should have. Um, oh, here's, yeah. Now a documentary on this is going to be coming out as well from Wayne. See, Wayne, I don't I don't miss anything. I see it all. No, the like an onion, the Vegas skim. So check out, you could get those books on Amazon. Just type in Wayne Klingman and you'll find them all right there. And uh, trust me, guys, you know me. I tell the truth. I don't, I'm not going to be like, ooh, this guy said to say his stuff's good. So it's good. You know what I mean? I don't do that. But you'll enjoy this very well written. And thanks again, though, Wayne. My, I probably have to say the Buffalo Mob or the Vegas Skim. Buffalo Mob, though, is just because I didn't know a lot, though, about it, though, really. Like, he's more current. That's like the return of. So it is, you know. But we don't do the, obviously, the current stuff because we never tried to want to jam anyone up. But the bottom line, I could say this. I think everyone knows that in Buffalo Mob is very active. Like, yeah, that's a fact. Everything's still fucking active. It's just about, about how much power did they have at this time or now? How powerful are they at this time? You know? But great to see you, pal. I just shot up to 1,800 subs in a matter of days. I can't believe, you know why you did that? And I knew right away because you're putting up documentaries. And then Mike, well, we're working on one though now, but I'm saying that's the way to go. Like, um, what's his name? Um, Brett in NYC Crime Spot. He puts up actual videos of like documentaries and he's there. We're, we're, we're just doing a lot of lives and a lot of shorts right now. We are going to start pumping them out this winter. Um, but congratulations, dude. Congratulations. And uh, from what that's crazy, it just shot up to 1,800 subs in a matter of days. I can't believe it. And you know what, man? You don't need a fucking huge camera crew and a whole production company to fucking do it. That was my fucking thinking in the beginning. But the Whitey Project, just, it just snowballed like that. You could just, I could just, I could do the voiceover with the pictures and stuff and like that. It's just, uh, I just do this because it's real fun though right now and stuff, but congrats, man. You deserve it. I, you know, I told everyone, guys, if you really want, if you're here for just, just organized crime and like, you know, someone who's legit with it, with the research, he's the best hands down history and organized crime hands down the best, um, research, like, you know, everything he says, he doesn't have the ego to like, oh, I like this better than this. So I'm going to say this. Like you just fucking see, he says it like it is and the channel's fantastic. Congrats, my man. Congrats, CJ. Cheers, buddy. Nice. So keep going now because I'm telling you, your channel should be whew, just like Brett's, you know, like the, the, the work to you guys do and the research and all that shit. It's earned. So congratulations, my friend. Loomis is the mob and the NEPA still active. Like I said, I don't like talking current stuff. All I'm saying is uh, I think everything out there is active. It's just about how powerful is it or whatnot. But to the degree of what it was, like, no, no way. Um, unless, you know, there's something like crazy hidden underneath. I don't know. But honest to God, uh, not compared to what it was in the 70s and 80s, even 60s. And well, 90s too. The mafia here was different, guys. So Russell Buffalito was the boss, but they didn't have captains. It wasn't like a five family type or, you know what I mean? And Russell was looked at like, the, you know, like that elder statesman who uh, was very well respected. And he was more like, you know, very tight with Genovese. But he was pretty much tight with everyone. Carlo Gambino, all of them. And he was like the point man, or he would set stuff up, you know, Appalachian meeting, he had a hand setting all that up, which is weird because Russell's very smart. And when you think if you go to a small town, all those cars and all those guys, like, they, like they're like out of town, you know, I could see how they got caught doing that. But maybe it wasn't his order. Maybe it was Genovese at that time. I don't know. 
But the mob, but the funny thing is, though, is that the, the Pittston mob, it's one of the, it's definitely one of the most powerful mobs. And was, especially with the unions and the, like Russell and Jimmy Hoffman were, that was, Russell was Jimmy's guy. You know, they were good friends too. So, um, but uh, just, it's, that's, it still blows my mind, man. Cause like when we were growing up around here, even my father would be like, you know who that is? And I'd just be like, no. And like, he would like tell me and he's like, you know, we think he, you know, like, you know, maybe just a little mobster, like whatever. And then you find out it's like, wow, un unreal. But there's, uh, there's still crazy corruption here and all that type of stuff. Absolutely. But the mob mob, I, I really just can't answer that because I don't want to give you a wrong answer. I am trying to find a book about the mob in the recording industry during the 1950s. Anyone help him out there? Oh, yeah, Brett, definitely. Come on. Let me get the uh, the link up for you. Nice. NYC Crime Spot's coming on, folks. And uh, Carlos, yeah, Wayne, Wayne Klingman just said there are a few. Well, let him know, Wayne. Hold on, buddy. Let me drop that link. Rocket engineering too. I don't see it, Mike. Where at you dropped it, buddy? Let me see. Be right on. No, 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 no. Wrong one. Hold on. Let me erase the other one. No, don't ban it. I just banned my fucking self. All right, it's gone. And that's off. All right, we good. <laughs> I thought you were a twin for a minute there. I know, it's so weird. I need to get like a fucking producer or some shit like that. I think though I just banned my own self though from, from speaking on here. But I don't know if that Italian, but that is it right there. Um, History and not a history and organized crime. CJ, though, we have to set up a show as well. I know Mike would love to have you on. Um. There it is, though. The link is dropped. So whenever I see it, take your time. I'll bring you in. Nice. This man right here is, uh, he knows, like, the Mayo crew. All of you, you've seen him if you've seen the episode. It's a great channel, too. Check it out. NYC Crime Spot. I see it. Yeah, it's in now. I see it. Hi, Maureen. Where's Maureen? I'm about to, I miss a lot of comments. I like to say hi to everyone. Hold on. Oh, Chris Breeder, what are we getting into tonight? What's up, Chris Breeder? Well, now NYC Crime Spot's coming on, so I'd love to talk even more DeMeo with them or whatever with them. Talk about, you know, today, like I said, if you read in the thing, it just says this is like a friendly show with everyone talking back and forth, like, you know, not just like a topic, but we will, though, fucking, you know, we'll talk about a few topics. And listen, it's a drop the link still for anyone who wants to come on. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Let's show you though know, some new uh, video footage though that uh, you know here's you know what we were talking though about um, what is it uh, getting your channel bigger? Here's you know this is what you, how to grow your channel. You know, just pull up on Sammy, and uh, that's a go to on how to grow YouTube. <laughs> Mike, I can't hit this one because I'm not going to talk about the other gay guy, but I will hit this. This Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern, we got on Shorty Rossi, the pit boss, philanthropist, ex-con, pit bull, bully rights activist, cigar right activist, cigar blender, author, producer. Shorty Rossi will be on Mafia Truth this Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, and this is going to be fantastic. 
So uh, definitely tune into that. I'll set up the show pretty uh, probably after here. I'll put it up, hit the notification bell. This guy's story is it's something else. I mean, Folsom Prison, he's very well respected and uh, he's a real one. And he had that show Pit Boss and all that. But just the stories I heard about him though beforehand and like in Folsom and stuff, I was just like, wow. So it's going to be that one's going to be, I can't wait. And it's this Saturday, this Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, Shorty Rossi. Nice. Let me see. No, oh, row, row. Oh, well, there you are. What do you mean? No, notific. That's so weird. Did you ring the bell? Roro's our um, moderator and OG Rube. So that means Ruby didn't even see it though either. But you know what? This is just like a random one. I should have told you beforehand. Well, I know I don't know how to tell you, Ro, but I know how to tell her because she's in Facebook Messenger. But this was just like a random, come on, boy, like read it, read it in the description, uh, just a board show. But Brett's coming on. It's from NYC. So I'm just fucking yammering my yapping away until he comes on. <laughs> oh, there's Maureen Mo. What's up, Maureen? How are you? I, I was looking for you up there, and I couldn't find you. Happy Halloween to you as well, Ro Ro. You can text the broad. I don't got your number, you know. But uh, yeah, I'll just text you anytime. Oh, I go on. That's weird though. You're not getting the notification. Maybe because with these, it probably notifies earlier. You got to ring the bell or some bullshit like that. I'm not sure. Mike, what are you laughing at? <laughs> oh, the fucking how to grow your channel. What a fucking punk. Ah. I can't text the broad. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> broad. Listen, I said it last night. Broad is not a bad word. It's a compliment in a way. Like, you know, that it, that's just how language barrier i guess you know but broad is great <laughs> i'm sitting on the step freezing my ass off giving candy out listening i appreciate that so much maureen thank you tell every one of those little fuckers though to subscribe will you <laughs> grab their fucking phone if they want a fucking piece of candy and tell them to hit the fucking subscribe button no uh, but uh <laughs> oh god bless you though Give those kids those treats, especially the ones out there knocking on doors. I just said earlier, I love it. I uh, love seeing that again because we used to have to set up like churches and they'd have to go trunk or whatever the fuck they call it. It lightened my heart today when I went for my coffee right before the show and I saw the little ones um, knocking on doors. Like the old fucking days. It was nice. Nostalgic, you know? <laughs> Lewis. You know, you know, you say, oh, what do you want? You sing a sing a song. No, fucking subscribe. <laughs> you want the Nestle? Fucking subscribe. No, but uh <laughs> that's great, Maureen. Thank you though for uh being dedicated and listening while doing that. That means a lot. All right, I gotta do a channel for Vegas Skim. Nice. Like right now, are you saying? <laughs> Yo, stop the baloney, dude. Put the phone sideways. Could you hear me, man? <laughs> Why is it sunny where you're at? Because I'm not where you're at, man. I'm no, but I mean, no, I didn't mean it like that. I meant it's 630 there. It's 630 dark. It's dark at 630 here, though. Is that right? No, man. It's, it's still daytime here, man. Is it night over there for real? Yeah, man. The fucking uh, sun is... um. It's a weird one. What? Yeah, no, it's not light at all here. Damn. Oh, wow. Wow. What's oh, up, man? No I just want to jump on real fast. No, you're good, man. That's great. I mean, I was trying by. Was I doing horrendous? No, nah, it was good, man. That's why I jumped on. I said, shit, I want a part of this, man. It was actually <laughs> good? No, nah, it was good, man. Straight up. Straight up, man. Yeah, I, I just want to tell one. everybody happy Halloween. Like, look. And... <laughs> 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 oh, stop the baloney, man! Hold on, right? <laughs> <laughs> right let's, let's give it around. Stop the baloney! Beautiful. Stop All right, go ahead, baloney, man. 
<laughs> Real quick. Why not? All that's right, how, that's how you grow a channel, man. Pull up. Talk about this, Mike. Talk about our man, Shorty. Oh, man. Let me tell you. I am man, I'm looking forward to that one, man. I talked to him earlier. And, uh, yeah, we need to get him over a flyer to, uh, you know, a thumbnail or something with the time and everything, Loomis. Yeah, I'll have that done after this show. Yeah, definitely. He wants to post it up on his stuff. This should be a really, really good show, man. And uh, he does a lot of good stuff for dogs. Uh, Pit bulls in particular is his main thing. You know, that's what saved him. He, you know, uh, he's very big into that, man. Rescue. And, I mean, still, not just as part of some show or, you know, something like that. That's like his life. <laughs> oh, gee, stop the baloney. I just noticed that. Go ahead. You didn't Sorry. notice, man? That's no. my new name, man. No. That's Go my ahead. new name. <laughs> oh, gee, stop the baloney, man. Continue. It's for Halloween. Continue. That's who I'm going as. Oh, you're going to stop the baloney? Yeah, stop the baloney, man. I I'm got pulling, it. <laughs> I'm pulling up and handing out slaps, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, go ahead though. I'm sorry. You were talking about Shorty. Go ahead. I'm going uh, for Halloween. I'm going as Gerard Gravano's right hand. <laughs> I'm taping. I love a, it. I'm taping a cell phone to it, and that's how I'm rolling. No, nah, man. Seriously though, man. <laughs> he's uh, he, man. He for real, man. That dude. I, I'm so looking forward to that show, man. He. uh he just does so much good stuff, man. His passion for dogs is real. Uh, the stuff he's involved with, uh, being an ambassador for companies, he's got his own cigars, all that stuff, man. I'm just is, hoping wasn't he, he though like a badass though or something at full? Like what? What's is his he? Story? Hell yeah, yeah, he is, man. I mean, he was he was living in for real, for real hard projects in L.A. You know what I'm saying? And get, in fact, the case that he caught that got him to Folsom was part of a gang. Uh, shootout, man, you know, and so, and he kept his mouth shut. I'm sure he could have been like, oh, it was them, it was him, I didn't do it, and could have got off. No, nah, man, he did 10 years in California prisons, which we all know is probably one of the hardest places to be, especially yeah, yeah. if you're rolling with a different race like he was, so... Man. So wait, he yeah, he was rolling with, he was with the whites or blacks? He was rolling with black dudes, man. Mm. You know, which... Like I said, you ask ask Ghost, ask any of those guys, man. Uh, that's not a easy thing to do in California. It it just doesn't work good for you like that. You know what I'm saying? So he was respected though as well, right? Like like totally straight. Respected. Well, you heard Derek uh, talking about him even, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for Derek to vouch for him like that, and Derek's real and straight up as you can get. Yeah, I don't uh, know if anyone knows that, but for the, you know what I mean. But yeah, I mean, I I think everyone though is able to tell Derek's a real one though. Right, know? but right. He's, I he's mean, he's trying to turn he's trying to turn it around. Right, right, right. And and you know, Charles Carnegie is not going to sit there with you in the cell for three hours at a time talking if you're full of it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, you know, you think he can't read people, but yeah, yeah, he's working on it, man. If he can avoid those uh, mobile home drive-bys, man, things will be good. Yeah, dude, exactly. Oh, dude, that was hysterical. That yeah. was hysterical. The mobile job, real solid man. Yeah, Ghost would know. Also, right, Joey right. Frakes laughing my ass off. Gerard's left hand. That's what I'm That's going what as. I'm going as, man. <laughs> oh, no, you're in Texas, though. Go five. I bet he's like in like one of those like hidden, he's like, you know, he's, probably in, he's probably in an adult home. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's, no, man, not. let me tell you, he's about, he's probably 13 hours from me, man, in Texas. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, yeah, you know. yeah, Texas is huge. I know, I yeah. know. Texas, Pennsylvania yeah. is huge, but Texas is fucking a monster. It's crazy, man. It's crazy, man. How big it is? But say, man, I'm not going to take up your whole show, man. You got a great show going. I just wanted to stop in for a couple minutes and tell you what costume I was going, and uh, <laughs> tell everybody to stop <laughs> the baloney, man, and keep it real, and tune stop in on them. Saturday too, man. Jeez. That's Saturday, crazy. 7 p.m. Eastern, guys. I'm telling you, this is going to be a good one. It's going to be an interesting one. Shorty Rossi, Pit Boss. And um, you can see his videos even on YouTube. I was watching a lot of the episodes. And uh, but I didn't know. You know, you, they say these guys are coming on A and E. You don't know if it's just like an actor or this or that, but the right. fact though that he's legit, interesting. Yeah. No, man. I mean, it's that dude is as real as it gets, man. And and I mean, 
like I said, the, the thing that gets me is how serious he is about having a – check this out, man. His People can look it up. His pit bull rescue, he's got – he, he's got RVs for each dog, man, out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're not in each kennel. Dog. Each dog has, like, their own little RV and stuff. And he has it all. They're all fixed up different, you know. Like, it may be two living in one. And they, they're in and out. They're not, like, locked in there. I'm saying in their own little area. It's amazing, yeah. man. It's amazing. So he really We're, takes care of them. Oh, like, man, you know. it's serious, man. It's serious. I mean, he's not just talking it. He's actually doing it, man. And so that's, like... That to me, that's huge, man. That's real commitment, and that's what know, he's still doing man. currently. Yeah, that, man. Still, what was that? that show was like ten years ago, it. right? Say it again. That show yeah. was like ten years ago, I think. Yeah, right? yeah. And he's still on it though, dude. That's awesome. I don't know if they're still doing that show. That's what. No, I'm no, no, no. I meant though that he's still doing. Still the, doing the, it. The, yes, yeah. yes. That's right. That's right, man. Yeah, that's his passion, though. He's got that passion. Right. It's not just a show. It's not just for, and man, you know, I, I started looking at his resume and this was stuff that I didn't even know before. I didn't realize he was in, uh, uh, the Grinch with, uh, Jim Carrey and a bunch of other movies oh, no that shit. he was in. Yeah, man. He was, I'll he check was out his movie. IMDb. Then he must have an eye. Yeah. Well, he would have oh, an IMDb yeah, man, page. Huge. Yeah. That'll yeah. Tell you he was all a talent agent too. Right. Right. No, I say he was a talent agent too. So, oh, I no mean, shit. yeah. Yeah, yeah. How old is he? How old is Shorty? Man, I'm gonna guess close to fifty. Uh, I was gonna say is he fifties? Yeah, yeah. Right, right at fifty something. Right in, right in his fifties to fifty. But just amazing dude, man. Hey, man. Yeah, he just he grew up just like he grew up in the hood, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he and the thing is that family took him in because he was having problems at home and stuff. So it, man, he's got just his story is incredible. But let me tell you this tough dude too man he was it, this is a funny one i saw the other day he was driving off with his rv man he, he drives a, he drives a dually man all right he's got okay. a dually he's driving off with this rv and the guy filming goes hey put your seatbelt on shorty he puts, pulls out his finger and says f you and try it's funniest clip ever man <laughs> it's the funniest man that dude's tough so we're gonna have to watch it man because he'll put us in our place like real fast yeah, well man. you know i think yeah, we'll see we'll see right 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 but i think days, we'll like, all be good no we'll be good though man i, I have all the re up the most utmost respect in the world for the guy of course of course obviously man yeah of course of course i don't think he's gonna come on our show and scream at us but <laughs> you know this <laughs> is out man <laughs> you know it is though man i don't put no one on a pedestal man you know you come right, on our show right. i don't give a fuck hey. if you fucking marry the queen of england i'm gonna fucking you know tell you how it is hey stop the baloney man i'm going as baloney I mean, we all bleed right red here. motherfuckers we all bleed red <laughs> <laughs> hey that's right that's right man everybody you know, I, i've never I learned that a long time ago, man. Everybody. But my respect, though, it's different than like be like, oh no, but I have respect over the fucking moon for the guy. Of course, of course, man, of course. All right, man, I'm gonna jet. Have a great show. Congratulations on the sobriety, bro. That's the biggest thing, man. That's that's the main reason I wanted to come on here, man, and tell you that. You got it, Mike. Thanks, Straight brother. Up. I appreciate it so much, man. And we'll be on possibly earlier, but definitely Saturday, seven p.m. again with the pit boss, Shorty Rossi, and uh, that's. It's going to be fuck. I'm fired up, man. It's going to be it's interesting, be great, guys. Man. Check it out this Saturday. Great, All man. right, Mike. Happy Halloween, man. Everybody take care, bro. Later. Happy Halloween. Later. Stop the baloney. All right. Stop all the baloney. <laughs> My le Gerard's left hand. What are you doing for what are you being for Halloween? Gerard's left hand. That's fucking great. Oh, thank you so much, OG Ruby. I appreciate you. Dog is God backwards. Coincidence? I don't think so. Listen, I know this is going to sound crazy, right? But I'll tell you. So my dog, Ozzy, and I've been quiet about it. That's why, like, my voice, I don't know if you were able to tell, but, like, uh, this is me actually, like, down. It's like, so we took her a month ago. She, um, and I bought her, like, I had, a, I this dog, it's, and it's, you know, smaller dog. It's always been on me. Like, it's, it's you know, it's like my, it's my fucking kid. And named the Ozzy. And, um. She's 11 now, and she got at that a large heart syndrome. So we got they got we got a pill for her, and um, she's, she was doing great. And then two days ago, she's like, I woke up and she's going <laughs> like, you know, like it, it fucking scared the fuck out of me. And so we couldn't get in touch with the vet. I wasn't going up the Plains Animal Hospital. Plus, I did something bad there a while ago that I can't talk about. But I, I just like we're not we don't go there anymore. So and it was their fault. The cocksuckers, by the way. 
you know, like looking at like my dog who's passed my last dog passing away. Like, it's just like, well, no, that's fucking family. Like they are their family. Anyway, I did like this prayer type, uh, you know, to my own fucking God or whatever it was like intensely. Uh, and I kid you not, the dog is running around, jumping up on everything today when we woke up and I'm just like, so relieved because when you're walking around, like with the heart condition, you just don't like, you know, and you don't want to find them passed away. It's just terrible. So, um, the only thing that's, I think, God, you know what, you're on to something, Roro. I think though that we don't deserve dogs and we're, they're here so that we could see what unconditional love it really is and loyalty. And, um, yeah, a lot of us don't even fucking deserve dogs, but yeah, that's going to break me for a little while though, you know, and it sucks though, man. I just wish they lived longer, but she's doing great though now. And, um, I'm just, I'm fucking so grateful. So grateful. So yeah, like every day, you know, every, just every single day, one more day with her, two more days, it's, it's just stop and smell the fucking roses. And, no. Uh, oh. That's my child. I don't have I don't have human kids, you know. I only have a dog kid. <laughs> so I I'm a I'm a pussy cat when it's when it comes to my uh my dog. Why it hurt Happy Halloween? What's going on, my man? Wait, Brett, where are you at? Are you ghosting me? Did Brett like really ghost me? Hold on. Is this him? Where is he at? Brett, Brett, Brett. I just talked. Oh, there he is. Wait. All right. I just texted him. Where the fuck are you? Hopefully he'll come on. Great to see you, Wyatt. Our, our pet should live forever. Yeah, man. It's I, I know. I, I fucking wish they did. You know, they deserve to live longer than humans. Let's be honest, people. What do you like better? Your animals? dogs or whatever or humans i mean for me it's not too uh that's not a hard question at all like definitely definitely like dogs better just because i know you know you know humans i mean you can meet some cool humans but you a lot of them are pieces of shit but dog you could go and fucking murder 25 people blow up a bank everyone wants to ever there's a bounty on you everyone's looking for you and you come up to your dog and it's like still how you doing about you know it's amazing well, it's not like they can watch the news and know what you did either. But you know what I mean? No, they always love you no matter what. If you like cows better than people, man, then that's that's got to be that's got to tear you up, though. Just some of the you know ways that they have to go and stuff. It's fucking terrible. I accidentally saw something that I didn't want to see. But farmer, no. So you're a legit farmer. Well, I hope so. Look at the tractor. Were you, were, oh, no shit, man. That's fucking awesome. Do you never know that? No, I, that was no disrespect. People have these weird names, like, you know, like they, they'll put up, like, uh, um, what's his, like, like Matrix number 021 or, like, you know, golfer. Bother, they never golfed. Like, I didn't know. So I would, that was no disrespect. So farmer's a farmer. Got it. Why 81? Is that when you were born? I was born in 81, too. Tell me you're from 1981. Be that. So you're my age. Yes, real farmer. I fucking love it, man. Where is Brett? He's ghosting me, people. He's ghosting me. I don't like it. I thought he was a good one. Nah, he's great. He must have got caught up with something, but... Oh, wait. Here he is. Oh, I said in a bit. In a moment, give me a few minutes. I'll come on. Oh, shit. He's like, dude, I met in a bit. I'm eating. But he said, give me a minute. I'll come on. <laughs> it's just easier, man, to do a show when you have someone else on. I think I'm terrible at it by myself. But, you know, I'm getting my rounds in. You guessed it on the 81. Nice, Spider. Five May 13th, 1981. Look up that date and see what happened. I was born at 1.37 p.m., but May 13th, 1981, something significant happened on that day. And it was it was funny, too, because my mother told me that. So, you know, they take I guess they take the baby away to give them clean and all that. And the nurses came in saying something terrible happened and they thought something happened to me. But no, but there was something happened on that day right around the time when I came out. 
I don't believe in like all that stuff though. Like, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, some like, like how are you, do you guys believe in like, you know, Taurus and Gemini and all that type of stuff? Like, do you see, I, what I do is I read rune. I like the runes and I've been reading books on how to be a rune reader and stuff like that. Like the Viking type culture, Nordic, uh, holy shit, Maureen. Yep. Pope was shot. Yep, May 13th, 1981. Now he's born at 1 37 p.m. And then uh and then that guy though took a bullet. Oh my god, 81. I graduated high school in 83. Where's my walker? Well, you know, I don't I, I don't know. <laughs> I had nothing. No, but what I'm saying is uh then that would make you I don't know. You're a beautiful soul. Fuck age. <laughs> you know, fuck the age. Don't tell me you're the Pope reincarnated. No, fuck no. Yeah, me. <laughs> the Pope. Nah, not one bit, farmer. Not one bit. Runes rock. Oh, man, I that, I do them every fucking like, week. And then I'm telling you, man, these, do I have my... Uh, when I was at the fucking Johnny Depp trial, I lifted it and it got all rained on, but it looks old school though or whatever though. But uh, I can't find that, but you got to start from the beginning. But I, I got past this book though. This is Beginner's Guide to Reading the Runes. And uh, it's just, they're, it's just, they're so fucking interesting, man. And you got Asatra for beginners, but there's like, the, like, I guess like there's groups though out there of people I saw on YouTube like a Satru now gets a bad rep because someone or whatever who's a Satru like got fucked over for like a sex crime or something like that so a Satru is like you know frowned down upon but it was just that guy who fucking did that but it's these new fucking people coming in thinking that they know what they're talking about because they studied it and la di da 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 but the bottom line is uh, I love the Norse shit this book right here man this is a doozy Tales of Norse mythology and just, just just the book itself is so fucking beautiful. I like the artwork in there and stuff. And like the gold pages right there. Oh, I love this book. But yeah, the runes are awesome, Wayne. I love it. Just for a normal, like almost modern day, I'm sure you guys know the author Neil Gaiman. Um American gods, like you know, he did that's a show though he did, but he wrote Norse mythology, this book right here, and the way how he tells it and writes, it's fantastic. Wayne, I'm sure you heard of Gaiman. I mean, you're an author yourself, but uh, this book is fantastic too. But this one though, here obviously it's not from, but it was written in 1820, I want to say 1820 something, but obviously re uh published like this, like a Barnes and Noble edition. Also, Derek Galantis, though, he's got some good warrior of light. Well, that's his fighting one, but they, where's the uh, and Derek Galantis, greed and fear. Derek's a friend of mine, good guy who knows us, knows his shit, knows his shit. And uh, he was associated with the Gambinos and like, you know, they got his whole family were like, you know, big scammers and stuff like that. And uh, we did our interview a while ago, but uh, he's a great guy. Uh, what else? Obviously, five families. That's a good one, though. But some stuff is like, eh. Well, CJ will tell you. I already paid out this book right here. Boston Mob. Yeah. Sabbath. I'm just fucking. What up to suck? And Muggsy's in the house. What's going on, gentlemen? Happy Halloween. Well, let's see. Or my social security, 50, 57 isn't old at all. Come on now. It really isn't for, you know what I mean? When you first said it, I added it wrong. I'm like, oh my God, she's 92. <laughs> That's why I had nothing, but I was kidding. But no, 57, come on, bro. You're beautiful. You're beautiful no matter what age you are. Come on. There you go. One of the better books. Look into blind runes. I know what blind runes are. And um, which ones, though, Wayne, do you do? Do you do the El Elder Frederick or the... Um, there's three of them. Hold on. I just want to get to everyone here quick. Hi, Chusa, Kairu. Chusa, you fucking mother. For some reason, I have your name on this, on this board here. 
up there, and I have no idea though why. <laughs> you probably pissed me off on one of the episodes, and I just like kept your name there so I could see it. Like next time I go to fucking Springfield, I'm gonna kill this guy. <laughs> no, I'm fucking with you, man. I didn't think though any a lot of people that would come on though for on Halloween and this and that, but thank you guys very much. And don't forget, we have an episode that's coming up in about five minutes with NYC Crime Spot again. So stay tuned, subscribe to Mafia Truth, and um, give it, I'll give this a like, though, to get it moving the algorithm. And if anyone would like to donate to the channel, the link is in top of the chat and in the description. All right, let's see what we got here now. Oh, no, I got to put my new Instagram up. I was just going to put... Um, No, oh, dear G Instagram subscribe. All right. We don't do that. Also, if you want to email me, I got a couple emails last night. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. That's some great conversations, but email the show at perluke, Eric at gmail.com P E R L U K E E R I C at gmail.com. And this way you can get directly in touch with me and, um, shoot the shit, exchange numbers. And, uh, yeah, you guys give me so many good ideas. That's what I love. And like, this is the thing about Mafia Truth. And it says we cover all the rackets. Because if you notice, you'll see Mike eating pizza, me and pizza, or, or like cooking or boxing. We just did that. We're, you know, yeah, we are a true crime no channel and we talk about that stuff, but we also are just, we cover everything, you know, just your everyday uh, stuff as well. But we're predominantly uh, Mafia topic, though. Let's see. Well, some getting into some boxing and sports too, which we love. Good night, Wyatt. Thanks for coming on. Happy Halloween. All right, Wayne, hit me up, buddy. You got my number. You got my number. Muggsy. My kids are grown, so no trick or treat for me. And I'm at work also. Thanks for watching, Matt. Appreciate that. Kids are all grown. You don't got to worry about that anymore. Well, it's probably great. I'd like what I saw earlier, though, with like, you know, the kids. Why it was just because it hasn't been around in so long. It really, like, warmed my heart. What do you mean I never call back? You don't even, you, well, yeah, well, then text me or stay on me because you know what it is? My ringer's always off because, or and notifications I always have off because it's like ding, ping, ping, pong at times. So I just, I don't ignore anyone. If I miss it, I'm just going to have to call back. And sometimes I might forget, but I genuinely don't be like, ugh. I'm not talking to him, so I apologize, Wayne. I'll talk to you, though. Um, absolutely. All right, history and organized crime. What clip did you watch of mine? I blew some guy's brains out. What? I blew some guy's brains. Oh, <laughs> I blew some guy's brains when he found out Garrison worked for Marcello and the JFK movie was about a mafia lackey. If a mob boss can't buy, a DA can't buy anything. I'll tell you the exact one I watched. Hold on. Remember, folks, it's I S E D because he's he's over in the UK. It's not um well you're easier to find now because you got the subs, dude. That's fucking great. And uh look at you. Yeah, I watched that one. I watched a fairy named Fairy, and then I watched hold on. There was one though that I just saw the other day. They had a killer thumbnail. Wait, are these the, uh, hold on. They were waiting for a meeting with long-time associates. Oh, wait, but these ones, though, are the ones that are already done, mobsters, right? I thought you were doing your own documentaries. Like, the, this stuff here, is that you? Yeah, because I watched all of these a long time ago on a show called Mobsters, which is still all right. It's just cool. I was just wondering. Uh, um. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not saying you can't do that. It's great, you know, make it all mob. But, but I know you were saying, though, that you were going to be doing, like, some of your own. And um, Charlie, look, Mafia, Prince the Prisoner. This is probably one of them right here. Yeah, okay, here we are. Dude. Is this you? Well, we'll talk, man. We'll, like, we'll talk. Hold on. Yeah, Brett's ghosting me. Night White never called back. You need a clone. 
No, you don't need two of me. Look at your share and appreciation invite. Look at the guest list and you can see your local DA's name as Russell had multiple DA's in his pocket. Oh, yeah. 100%. I just don't want to take it to all out, though. There actually, do I have the, uh, I have the pictures. Give me one second. He absolutely around here. Of course, uh, he, every single time, you know, he was man of the year around here too at Genetti's, which is on um, a prize. They give out to someone who helped out the community, like who really helped people and stuff. And just the whole County though picks. And he was man of the year. He was loved around here. My kids carved a pumpkin and ate candy here, drinking Bailey Pina Colata. Nice. Enjoy that. Enjoy that, Ruby. Where we got my wife always has hers off too. Drives me nuts. What's the point of having a phone if it doesn't ring? No, I know. But there's times like I just, or I'll have it on. I don't know. I have it on. I just have to have it silent sometimes. But, uh, because, and let's be all real. Do we always want to answer our phone when people talk throughout the day? No. <laughs> you know, not being an asshole, but there's just, a, you know, you'll call them back, you know, at that times. But that's all. JJ Fedora, good evening to all in the chat. Looking sharp with the fresh cut. Saw the short. I'll watch replay out for the night. Like given. Thank you, JJ. Great seeing you again. Appreciate that. Be safe out there. JJ Fedora. Great girl, great lady. Look at this. I watched a two-part series last night on Tubi called Banano, a Godfather story. It was pretty interesting. I saw that. Yeah, that's um. Hold on, it's killing my head. One second. This right here, right? Yeah. See, my camera's supposed to be 4K and clear. Oh, you know, I better to go like this. A tradition of violence. Taught him survival. They killed my brother, Katharina. My brother. The wonders of a new world. Came to New York City. Gave him opportunity. <laughs> There's a lot of heat. America's a good place to make money. Maybe to put it. He built an army through intimidation. It does not make me proud. He conquered by fear and ruled with absolute power. I'd like to introduce you to the next president of the United States, John Kennedy. To become one of the mafia's founding fathers. We got the guy. His name's Oswald. He got the man fast that didn't have an Italian name. No, for sure. sure. Based on the best-selling novel. Power of the sea. About the rise in power. Power achieved. You were banished from my world. And the fall from grace. I understand the government would like to talk to me. Of an American dynasty. And what was the name of it? Cosa Nostra. This is not what I have in mind for you. Make a future for yourself. But my future's here. Artisan Entertainment presents The X Files Martin Landau. American Knees Edward James Olmos. Mobsters Costas Mandalore. And Scarface's Robert Loggia. Bonanno, a Godfather story from Artisan Home Entertainment. I have to rewatch that. It's been a while, but uh, yeah, that's the best I could do. We're not we're not a fancy network though that could just play trailers unless they're up. How about Bonanno, though, guys? Like, what did you? you I want to hear from you guys on this. How did he not get whacked out when uh, when the commission trial though was going on? Even before that, though, when he wrote a fucking book, what was it, Man of Honor? And it fucking said he gave the outline of the whole fucking uh, fam the families, the five families. How it was a boss, the consigliere to the capos, you know, boss, consigliere, underboss, all that. And uh, to the captains, all the way down to the soldiers, all the way down to the associates, like, you know, the whole graph. I mean... What was that? And then that's where Giuliani, he was reading that and he was like, oh my God, this is Rico. So like, 
you know, Bonanno, I don't know if on purpose or whatever, though, he has, he definitely has a huge part in the destruction, though, of the mob at that time. Absolutely. Because, I mean, maybe Rico would have eventually kicked in, but that is, though, what kicked him when Rudy Giuliani saw that. And I mean, why would he lay it out like that if it's a secret society and he's one of the old timers, one of the originals? It makes no, that's like Russell Buffalino come out of book and that would never happen. So it makes you wonder about Banano. Like maybe he was just too egotistical and he wanted it. I don't know. But let's be honest, though. That's shit. I forgot that the mic was all the way over there. Hopefully you heard me talking about Joe Banano. And uh, how the fuck didn't he get whacked? You know what? Maybe he didn't get whacked out of respect for who he was. But I mean, that goes out the window, though, after something though like that. And you know what? It was a different time. Well, no, no, they were fucking powerful as fuck. I can't. There's nothing that I just don't get it. And he stayed in Arizona. He lived in Arizona because he moved there to, he, to Arizona because his kid, um, the younger one, Banano, he uh, had something wrong with his uh, ear or say it was something wrong where they wanted to move to a better climate. But I, that just fascinates me, though, that why would an old, usually the old timers keep their fucking mail? About, like, why would he, you know, okay, you didn't talk to law enforcement. Why would you put that in a book? I mean, guys, am I wrong? Like, what do you think of that? that that's kind of, uh, that's that's not smart at all. And um, that's the other thing, too, man, you got to watch. A lot of, like, you know, mobsters back in those days or whatever, like, you don't, like, well, especially now, Frank Sharon does, Billy's trying to do one from up here, but a lot of it's false. But, like, you know, right when they're about to pass away, they just end up, you know, I don't know what, they maybe they want their name known or whatever. But, um yeah, that just that's fascinating to me. Let me hear what you guys think. Let's see. He never got whacked because he ran away and hid. They they ran to Marcello for protection. They took his racket and exiled him. Yeah, but that's not what he was. He was also with his cousin Bob Magadon. I can never say the name, but uh he was in no, but I'm saying though, yeah, he ran, but I mean there was time no people, everyone knew where he was at in Arizona. And um when Sammy the Bull actually was living out in Arizona, they contacted though him just to say because you know he was known like as a like you know Sammy obviously was known as a nut even though he fucking cooperated and all that. And um, Banano and them though were just I guess making sure. So he was definitely like on his heels like whoa what's this probably but it's just weird man. But why would he do that? You know like if you watch the old footage of like a Russell or like a Vito Genovese, you know those guys don't you'll never crack them. You absolutely, I mean, not even to crack him in the police station, they would never, no, nah, I just, you know what I mean? I don't know, that, that's odd. Listen, even if he wrote it, just a book is odd, but he fucking laid it all out for him. Here's how we do it. I'm on top. This guy's right here, and here, there's the caps, there's their soldiers, and then there's, like, laid it right out. But wait, what did he say at the end? He was exhaled, but he was, he absolutely was, you know, and that's why I went back to the whole respect thing, CJ, like exile stuff. Like a lot of people usually would just get whacked, but he was like, you know, an original. So that's what I'm thinking. But when that happened, that wasn't because of the book or anything though, like that. That's what I'm saying. Like when, when he did that, it's like, what the fuck? Where's Mike and married? I miss him. What's up, Mike? What's up? Thanks, OG Ruby, for, for saying you're here. See, I, these girls are on point. Thank you. Happy, happy Halloween, everyone. And if we ever grow this channel to something or whatever, though, you know, we help all of our team. We help our team out. So thank you, OG Ruby and Roro. Where the fuck is Brett? He's just ghosting me. But seriously, though, that fascinates me with uh, um, Banano. Fascinating. If you're coming. All right, let's see what we got. That's the first movie where I've ever heard anyone say anything and glad to know about Carlo Gambino. I have to rewatch it. It's a real long time ago. Like I was on, like it's on YouTube, I think. Like you know, it was like a real long time. Uh it's an old one too. Not real old, but would you say anything a Carlo Gambino? Oh, I never 
heard anyone say anything bad about Carlo Gambino. No, no. And he was respected like so much, even by the street guys. Because after him, when Paul got it, and that, that's when they were like, this guy's not a gangster or whatever, but everyone respected Don Carlo. And he, yeah, he was one of, if not one of the most powerful uh, mob bosses ever easily. And guys, look how he did it. He died watching a Yankees game in his house in the comfort of his bed. You know, you live that age and um, you live to be that age. That says something in that life because most don't. Or meaning out of prison or um, dead. Mike and Mary. Magadano and Giancana wanted him dead. Gambino, everyone wanted him dead. Marcello said no because the heat was too much. JFK was killed a year prior. Marcello told them, forgive and forget and punish. Yeah, no, I that you're talking when he was back then. My I'm my point is I'm just shocked that after this, that's everything you said is solid. But after all that happens, he writes a fucking book. And he lays out the whole entire fucking family, like like how it is. And the feds didn't know that yet. So, and it, that's what they used that book in evidence on the commission trial. So what you're saying is absolutely correct. But my whole point here is how the fuck did the man, no one go after him after he would do that? Like, I mean... Because in those old timers, you're not even supposed to, even if you're arrested, just, you know, how they tell people. But Johnny Sack and the Sopranos, right? When they're like, when he's like, yes, I was involved with the, or he never, he didn't rat on no people, but he's like, yes, I'm involved with La Cosa Nostra. <laughs> Phil Leotardo, God bless Frank Vincent, RIP. He's like, a fucking disgrace. <laughs> he's like, they're all pissed, but that's how they were supposed to be. And he's an original old timer. And, you see witnesses write books, right? Because they're protected. They're in the witness protection or whatever happens, moves on. The mob isn't what it was. People die off. But um, he wasn't a witness, though. It's mind-boggling to me. Because I could see, all right, you're exiled, you're gone, forgive and forget. But, but while you're exiled, forgive and forget, shut your fucking mouth. And don't write a book telling everyone how the system works. The book came after Luciano's book, Costello's book, Meyer Lansky's book, the Lachi book. Many books are written. However, they never mentioned made men, capitals, or the layout. They followed a murder. He did not exactly. As I was reading at first, I was like, this CG. I'm like, yeah, dude, but they didn't lay out. But I, exactly. That's what's just fascinating to me. But he wrote, though, this book. All those guys, though, weren't, I don't believe, though, were the authors, though, of their books. There's books about them. I could be wrong. Meyer Lansky, though, uh, I believe he had involvement. But that in the movie, though, that, that book or nothing doesn't exist. I don't know why they did that in that movie. I actually enjoyed that movie, Lansky. I don't know if you guys seen it. Um, Harvey Keitel played Meyer Lansky. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. NYC cry. Oh, he goes drop link. It, the link is dropped, right? Where's, I thought I saw OG, Mike. Could you drop that link again, Mike? Stop yapping and drop the link. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ghost. I didn't know he was there. What the fuck? Yeah, I watched that one. Mike Bromile, what's going on, my man? Great to see you as always, pal. We're bringing in uh, NYC Crime Spot Brett now, but oh, fuck. Hold on. Fuck. I need another one of them. Hold on. This one's almost going to go. I got to go to the store. Not yet, though. Let's do a show. Um. Oh, it's only 8.14, too. La, 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 la. All right, here, man. Boom, boom. I just put it inside your text message on your phone, the text messenger on your phone. I texted you the link, or do you need it in the chat? 
why I don't know why he did that, because maybe he thought no one would do nothing as the information was already out there. He never thought it would be used in court, but it was. No, I mean, no, exactly, though. I mean, I don't think that he did that, obviously, like, oh, let me help them out or thought that would happen. But you're not even supposed to fucking talk about it with those old timers at all. It doesn't even exist. So to lay it out, why would you like do that to like show the graft? I, I, you know what I mean? It's just mind boggling to me, but yeah, he did it. It is what it is. You get that text, Brett? This fucking thing kills my eyes. Jesus Christ. What we got? Here, I'll put it in the chat. Ah, oh, boom, here he is. Forget about it. <laughs> Dude, who the fuck is that fucking? What's his name? Yo, what's going on, man? <laughs> is, Can you hear me? Who's that? A, yeah, who's that a picture of? Oh, that's my Ramundi mask for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was it. Didn't he kill the... Speaking of the Pope, didn't he kill him? Um, He... Yeah, I believe so. In, in Italy... They killed him because he was going to go against. Uh, he was going to start um, persecuting the mob, so they had to send some people over there to uh, basically take him out. He was going to flip the script on the mob, so Ramondi had to go. You know, yeah. so Ramondi is a big, big player. Oh yeah, I mean this guy. <laughs> that's why I'm him for Halloween. So I'm very impressed by him. <laughs> that's why I'm him for Halloween. He says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fucking great. So, you know, I... <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Um, no, he's cool. So I, I mean, see he's him cool. On... Like, I like that he exists. Like, he's, it's funny. Yeah, no, I get it, though. But the but I I read some comments under on Vlad, and there's like, you know, Midwesterns and people like, this guy's the real deal, you know. But I mean, oh, apparently no. he is. If you, I mean, you're, you're him for Halloween. I mean, I wouldn't fuck around. Also, though, no, I got a buddy, though. I could fucking out that right now, and I won't though. But um, I'm not gonna say nothing. Anyway, you're right. He's like a cartoon character now. Yeah, he's not real. Like I did a parody on my channel on him, uh, making him look very good because I was just like made a documentary, basically just stating everything that he stated in interviews. And yeah, he's lived an interesting life if it's true, but <laughs> it's not. Yeah, man. I mean, the the Pope. Listen, you're going to wake up and you say to yourself, you know what, man, I'm going to lie to everyone and say I was fucking them out, this and that. The, 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 you know, say stuff that's believable. Don't say you took out the fucking Pope. <laughs> you know well, what that's, I mean? That's, no, where that's does probably that the confidence yeah. come from? Like, well, how do people do Like, where does that come from? Well, that's the most believable part of the story, the Pope. Because everything... <laughs> really? <laughs> everything... Everything else is handled like, after I heard the Pope. I'm sure there was many more, but he's he was well, he was a Luke, he was a heavyweight Lucchese, I hear. Uh Colombo, but he said that he killed three hundred people in Vietnam. Um yes, and he has the he has Vietnam he has Vietnam veteran tattoos, which I'm not sure why he tattooed on his body, but he he Does has he the tattoos. Any? Um what else? Oh, he planned the Lufthansa heist. Oh, that's right. I forgot he planned that. That's right. With with his uncle Meyer Lansky. That's right. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so oh. you know. <laughs> and uh, oh, so, so keep going. I want to know more about him. So he planned the Lufthansa heist with his uncle Meyer Lansky. So uh, do we. Well, well, before it happened, was the thing that happened was they had a meeting right in some warehouse or some shit, right? And yeah. all the top guys in the families were there, right? For for whatever reason, Ramondi was there, you know. Okay. And uh, Jimmy Burke is saying this and saying that, and some other guy saying this. And Ramondi's over there under his breath, like, this is bullshit. And they're like, you got a better idea? And then he starts, like, schooling everybody on basically. What, Jimmy Burke, right? Yeah, yeah. He's telling everybody why their ideas are so bad. And then he basically gets up and says, listen, there's only one guy that can do this job. And it's basically his uncle, Meyer Lansky. So he flies out to Florida to have the meeting with Meyer Lansky. And uh, him and Meyer Lansky make a couple of trips to JFK, the Lufthansa terminal. And they're observing the situation. And they basically plan this whole thing. And um, 
they get away with it. Maya Lansky and Raimondi. <laughs> Everything uh, I told you just came from Raimondi's mouth. I didn't make anything up right there. I know you did it, man. I, you know, <laughs> I believe it. I believe oh, it. Um, <laughs> but it goes, it gets deeper, though. I don't want to bore you with Raimondi's fucking biography. No, 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 no. I mean, you know, I don't even see how that could get boring, though. I mean, what a life. Uh, Jeff Nadu thinks he's full of shit. Uh, well, the Jeff Nadu doesn't know what he's talking about because Ramondi's a real one. Oh, Come yeah, on, he's man. he's the real deal. He he made he's a real, Greg he's a real deal, shit. Matt. He made Greg Scarpa shit in his pants. He's actually the reason why um, Scarpa was talking to the feds. Farmer got a great point here, too. Maybe he knows what happened to Joey Dracula. Oh, yeah, possibly. It could that's be. He probably fucking, killed him. That's a smart point by Farmer. He probably killed him. <laughs> but you know where this guy got spotted, right? He got spotted in some documentary about Coney Island people, and he was like a cigar salesman in Coney Island. Wait, 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 wait. Run that back again? There's a documentary online, something about Coney Island, like um, talking about Coney Island, like people who work there, like the, the whole community, whatever there. And um, he ended up in that documentary talking about whatever. And he was the cigar salesman in that documentary, like before he made up all these like stories. He's like a car. I, I, I thought they, I thought this is legit. Oh, yeah. Well, before he started coming out with the stories about uh, his interesting life, he was he was undercover as a cigar salesman and he owns a company called Godfather Cigars. OK. All right, so, yeah. I mean, you know, the name of the show here is Mafia Truth, so we like to get at the truth, folks. Ramonde, real deal. Um, yeah, 100%. Don't fuck with him. You know, I, you, know, you know what? I'd like to interview him, though, but I'm not doing a face-to-face -face with him. Sit down, only a stream. I don't want to be near him, man, because he's very capable. You should meet him. He's in Brooklyn. He's been. Uh, he's been. Uh... <laughs> I can't. Oh, I fucking can't. Oh, gangster no, cigars. Yeah, Mike. Mike more. Mike, more mile or more meal. I don't know how you would pronounce that. Mile or meal. But I like yeah, Jeff Nadu. Right. He he does very good interviews. By the way, but, I like him. But he no, was right. Um, he's right about that. What did he write? Uh. Got Gangster Cigars. Yeah, I think his company is called Gangster Cigars. If you look it up, like Gangster Cigars, LLC, you'll find Anthony Ramondi's the owner of that company or some shit. Reality with Craig Gatto. How are you doing, my hey, friend? Hey, what's going on? How are you, Craig? Brett, my brother. He's a fucking straight what's Carney up? sideshow. Look at these people, though, man, not believing, though, Ramond. This is, this is ludicrous. I mean, did you guys just hear Brett? What fascinates me, I heard that, too is how he schooled Jimmy Burke. He did school Jimmy Burke. Follow, yeah. follow. Uh, Tell us about that again. Greg, by the way. Tell uh, us about that well, again. Well, the thing is they originally, they wanted to, according to Ramondi, they wanted to fly in there. All right, so this is where it gets interesting. They wanted to fly in there with helicopters first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. According to Ramondi, they wanted to fly in there with helicopters and they wanted to rappel down into the you know the Lufthansa cargo building. Yeah, I got it. Ramondi said this was not possible because Why too loud. No, because by the time they were done pulling the job and the helicopters were flying away, they would have like fighter jets there. Um, one fighter yeah. jet in particular was called Puff of the Magic Dragon. That was apparently a fighter jet that I guess the military or NYPD or whatever it is. But who had access to this, though? Because Ramondi didn't like this. Well, that's what was going to come if they used the helicopters. He said the fighter jets will be here in fucking five minutes. And he oh, referred Mike, to one of Mike those. was the one, though, that was getting the fighter jets? Not Mike. I know a Mike Ramondi. I mean, Ramondi was the one that, no, that was getting No, no, no. He said they could not use helicopters because the, the, the law, you know, the fucking the feds or the NYPD or the fucking military, they would have fighter, fighter jets. Shoot the helicopters down. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The fucking Good authorities fact. would come with fighter jets. But the mind is much more powerful than the sword. Ramon right. is smart. Right. But what he said was that one of the fighter jets was called Puff the Magic Dragon. Like, are you being funny? No, I swear to God. That's, I'm quoting everything that he said. I've studied this fucking character. Oh, well, yeah. I forgot. You're him for Halloween. Look. I'm I got him for it. Halloween. Yeah. 
All right, keep going, man. This is fascinating. Um, what else we see. got on him? So wait, 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 wait. So, so Jimmy Burke and them, then they obviously wanted to go in helicopters blazing. Ramondi then told Burke and his crew, not a good idea. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. Um, so ultimately, like I said, he went down to get Meyer. He had a couple of meetings in Miami with Meyer Lansky, his uncle, Meyer Lansky. And uh, they made a couple of trips to the little Tonza terminal. And there was like these yellow, these bright yellow metal cases that were wrapped up in chains. And Meyer Lansky told Ramondi, there's something in those boxes. And Ramondi was like, all right, whatever. So then they came back a week later and the fucking boxes were still there. And Meyer's like, I'm telling you, Anthony boy, there's something in those boxes. So basically what it was when they finally fucking went into the Lufthansa, there was a bunch of jewelry and money and fucking. Was Meyer there? Checks. No, Meyer wasn't there. He just planned the whole thing. And then he kind of made off with it because he's so smart. So he made off with a big payday. Got it. Got it. So basically most of the money came from steel, yellow steel boxes with chains on them that were sitting in the cargo room in front of everybody for like a month. They were just sitting there. Okay. According to Anthony Salvatore Luciano Romandi. Yeah, but I mean, but, but what really happened though with the Latans is that like they tied up the workers, all of that. Now Romandi was there, correct? I don't know if he said he was actually there for the heist when it went down. But he was oh, the he's, the, he's he the brains, was the though. He, he's the brains. Yeah, he's the mastermind. You know, like Jimmy Bark wasn't there either. You know, he's a mastermind. So Anthony uh, Romandi, he wasn't there either. You know, the masterminds, they kind of send out their minions, you know, to take care of the job. This is great stuff, dude, because, you know, yeah, I love, I mean, it's just, it's I love just... though, learning about new stuff, though. So then basically, Jimmy, in a nutshell, Jimmy Jimmy wanted to go in with helicopters, correct? 100%. Okay. Helicopters can't happen because Ramondi said the fighter jets are going to shoot him down. That is correct. Correct. That's correct. Yeah, just don't forget one of yeah, the. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm doing, I'm doing a, I'm doing a yeah. refable. If that's even a word. Okay. Um. So then, Ramondi gets tells Jimmy, you know, sit down, Jimmy. You know, you gotta, you know, Jimmy obviously sat down, and Ramondi told him that you can't go in with helicopters. This is how we gotta go in. So the way that it was actually pulled off, I'm asking you. That was all of Ramondi's idea after he told Jimmy no helicopters? Yeah, I think it just went down the way it went down. They went in there with fucking the cars, whatever. You know, the way it actually went down, I think that's the way it happened. Or the way he says that. I got to brush up on that little detail. But he is basically responsible. Him and Meyer Lansky are basically responsible for um, planning that whole thing. Yeah. If you could believe that. That's a great question. Alive or dead for me would be uh, Russell. And no, probably, uh, I don't know. That's a great question. That's What's a great question? one. No, not about that. Just for taking a time out. Hey, Mafia, treat the Brett. Love the content. Who's the oh, one okay. gangster you would love to talk to? Alive or dead? Probably for me, it'd be like a gentleman gangster who's cool. He could hang around with, though. I mean, I already sat around some, though, that were very nice and fucking very cool. So, like, the ones that are like that, not the fucking insane ones. Uh, you know, alive or dead, jeez. When I was at Pat Nee's house, Pat, like Pat Nee, he he's a guy you could sit down and talk to and drink and have a conversation though with, and he knows, you know what I mean. He's not yeah. just gonna kill you for no fucking reason or whatever like that. Yeah, he's capable, but he's uh very nice. You know what I mean? Like he's just not like that. You know what I mean? I'd rather be a guy yeah. around a guy I could have a good time with. Yeah, I would see. I would pick somebody really grimy. Like I wouldn't. I wouldn't go to like. What about oh, Ramondi? That's well, I would pick, huge. well, Ramondi's obviously, but I would pick somebody like really grimy. Like it, to me, it probably wouldn't be like some smart, intelligent, you know, mafia architect that goes way back in time. It'll be like some fucking grimy. Like I don't know. I gotta think. Give me a minute. I'll come up with something. Yeah, and uh, I just want to thank Chris Pod Poggy here. Hey guys, that channel popped up on my feed. I'm joining to keep up the great work. Yeah, man. We use this is just a random chat. Like we usually have. Well, this is great because NY because we you know we got well sorry Ramondi's on for Halloween but it's NYC Crime Spot but subscribe up man and thank you please give I us would a say like. I would say probably like I said this is because I'm from Queens New York City because I, like I would probably I would say probably John Carniglia and he's alive John, Car John Carniglia yeah okay and he's alive 
Um, we were talking about Charlie maybe, yesterday. That's maybe an odd choice for some people, but that that would probably be my choice for a real. Right. Uh, if it's either, I, I was saying for hanging out with, having a good time with, though type. But to pick a mobster's brain, who would I want to talk to? Whitey Bulger is one of them. Yeah. Because I want to, uh, well, we found out a lot of stuff, but it's just, I want to hear his side just because I like to hear everyone's side. And um, another one to pick their brain would be um, maybe Don Carl, Don Carl, or maybe Marcello, but they're not going to talk, but if they were able, maybe an old timer like that. Craig says Sal Alvellino. That's a good one. Oh, Never mind. I'm sorry, guys. I'm like Irish. I, you know me. I love my Irish mob. I love Italian. Oh, yeah, mob, no, dude. whatever. Yeah, mine's not even Irish mob. Mickey Featherstone. Yeah. Mickey Featherstone. I want to. Yeah, yeah I, I, he's another one. I bet I could sit down with Mickey Featherstone. I would like to talk with, yeah, because he was like, I don't know, man. If you watch State of Grace, that was Mickey. He was like the long hair, like love Guns and Roses type, fucking like look like rocker type dude, but would fucking kill you in two yeah. seconds, and um. I would, uh, yeah, Mickey, definitely. He's still alive and out there somewhere, too. <clears throat> I'd love to get that fucking interview. Jimmy Coon and his nephew lives down here. I talked to him because he was in recovery and died. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, he fucking hates Mickey. But then at the same time, though, I don't know. They almost tried doing Mickey dirty. But, you know, Mickey, you know, he cooperated, though. Yeah. Fish, what's up? Fish is in the house, the underboss. What's up, Joey? Yeah, I'd have to think, but it would, it would, yeah, Pharaoh. Yeah. That's who you were talking. What's that? Oh, yeah, OG Mike's going way back. Um, yeah, mine would be just for like uh personal reasons. Like I wouldn't even like like gangster or whatever or Italian mob virus. I was gonna say Ramonde, man, but I, I want I, I think I'd be too frightened to be honest with you. What do you think? Yeah, I thought about it too, but I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I can get too close to him, especially after doing that video. So, you yeah, know, it's you bad know, enough. We live. In, it's bad enough. We live in the same city. You know, so, and you know, Tough. you know, if he wants to find you, he'll find you. Yeah, he's proven that many times in his life. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Oh, I can't do it. Handstand is the gangster to interview. Handstand. Steve Wonder Boy Korea. Yeah, he's alive. I mean, he's in prison. Yeah, the reality or... report with Craig Gatto, guys. Subscribe over there, though. It's Probably a great channel. Never get out. Or maybe he'll get out. I don't know. King Tone, Latin Kings. Yeah. I know he's talking about I wish great. Yeah, I remember as a kid they had the nineties uh Latin Kings uh documentary Me too. HBO, and King Tone was in those old HBO. If you guys ever fucking want to go back and watch some cool stuff. The Latin Kings things on the HBO back in the day with King Tone and all that. Those are really cool, man. Old school HBO is the shit, man. I really used to love that stuff. Oh, I loved it though. I loved it though. And um Frankie DeChico. Yeah, Frankie DeChico, I'd love to like Learn more about. I heard he was a badass, tough as nails. Even Sammy said he wasn't even a pit bull on his on Frankie the Chico's ass. And uh, that whole family was like enriched in mafia though. But Frankie was very tough, and he's the one that got fucking blown up. Yeah, now, listen, if they, if they had a controller though, right there, and if it was gas, I don't think it. Gas play probably like planned it. I don't think he's the, maybe he is the one that hit it. But you're telling me that they didn't know that it wasn't John. No, I mean the guy that. What, the guy that actually put the bomb physically there? Yeah. Yeah, I believe that was a guy by the name of Herbert Pate. But were they, were they really thinking they're blowing up John? Uh, they'll, take was, Frank, they'll take Frankie just as much. I mean, I don't think it mattered. I mean, um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, I, mean, I, don't know if gas ever, I don't know if Gas Pipe ever admitted that. I don't recall it. Um, if anybody in the chat knows, but I don't think they probably didn't even care at that point, even if they thought it was Frankie DeChico. Me too, Joey. Definitely Danny, though, for me too, as well. He's fucking nuts. You know, how come though he doesn't get all the hate? Like, Whitey Bulger gets so much hate, always an informant, and there's really like no proof of him really being an informant except for the fact that people are saying it. But if you look into it, there isn't. But Danny Green was absolutely an informant and stuff, and people are like, ah, but you know. 
it's like that whole, like, you know, I guess they pick who they like or whatever. I mean, I'm not a fan of like any of these guys, you know, it's not like, you know, I'm a, like, I'm, you know, I'm a fan of like a certain band. I love black Sabbath. I'm not like a fucking, cause there are people who are fans of these cer certain um, individuals and that's fine if that's your prerogative, but um, yeah, you know, Zips did it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as far as I know, the guy who was apparently did it was a guy by the name of Herbert Pate who knew how to make bombs. Evan, that's a big stretch right there. Are you listening to the other channel? Sammy didn't blow him up. I don't care what anyone says. He did not kill Frankie DeChico. I mean, I don't believe that. I mean, you're entitled to believe that, but I don't believe that. You're entitled, absolutely entitled to believe that, though. But, but I don't think Sammy, even if he wanted to kill Frankie DeChico, you think he would blow him up on 86th Street across the street from fucking... Yeah, Valley. exactly. Across and also... To Veterans and Friends Social Club, right? I mean, why the fuck would he do that? I mean, that's fucking totally bizarre. Yeah, and, and and Sammy didn't even like want to be all the way up like under like he eventually got it though, but he was like the more to low key. Sammy would be the guy that's like even if he was offered boss like gas pipe in a way, gas pipe didn't want to be boss, so he fucking had um uh oh my god, why can't I think of his name? Vic uh, Vic Amusa? Vic, yeah, yeah. You know, you know they caught Vic ten minutes away from me at the Scranton Mall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah the Scranton right. Mall. That's where Vic was when he was on the run. Yep. And they got him. Oh, Anthony Ramondi did it? Okay. Oh, what did he, he do? It was Ramondi who blew him up. Oh, no shit. Ah, uh, fuck. That's who did it. Yep, bro, you're right. Tony and Cigar. Ramondi, though, you know, you know what? Even though Ramondi's a Colombo, I bet here's what happened. Ramondi knew, because he knows the fight, he knows the rules better than anyone, as you know. He saw what John did. And, you know, he's so old school, Ramondi, that he absolutely knows that he can't stand for killing a boss. He saw no one was stepping up. Hence, <laughs> there's the bomb that killed Frankie. What do you think? Holy shit. What do you think? I mean, it could be. He might have a souvenir somewhere. You never that's know. a huge, I mean, that's, I'm 90% on that. He 95. Might he might have a piece of the souvenir or something. You never know. No, he I know. Piece, he might have a piece of the Buick, you know? Uh, he's smart, though. I don't think he'd do that, you know? <laughs> he's smart. I mean, look, at he's out here telling people he murdered the Pope and no one's arresting him. There's no statute of limitations on murder. So, I mean, this guy's well protected. Yeah, well protected. He, well, you know, the mob had control of the Vatican at that time. This guy wanted to go against it, wanted to start, you know, coming after mob influence. So, Ramondi took care of him. But after he takes care of him, you got to understand, they put in the Pope that's going to fucking do the right thing. So they don't have to kill another Pope. That's why Ramondi doesn't go to prison. Now, didn't Ramondi don't kill the Pope, though, from poison? I believe it was poison, yeah. Okay. I heard that, like, he went to, like, you know, because I, I, that you know what fascinated me? How Ramondi could even get near the Pope's chambers. Well, listen, when you understand the dynamic with the Vatican and the mob at that time, you could see how he got in, you know? I mean, all you had to do was look the part. They knew right away who he was. Sergio well, Tacchini well, tracksuit, sunglasses, they knew that. Well, I, I obviously, yeah. Um, Jesus, dude, that's, that's fucking it's wild. Tough, it's hard to talk about, to be honest. That's why I'm <laughs> 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 oh, I tried so hard. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> That's why I'm a little hesitant. It's it's it's, a, it's tough. It's tough to talk about. You know, you no, I know. And we'll, we'll move you on. Got, you know what they say about active guys? That's why I don't talk about active guys on my channel really like that. So no, I I I are you fucking kidding me? I I wouldn't blame you. You gotta be careful. I wouldn't fucking blame you at all. No, bro, bro, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, oh yeah, the what the last question on Ramonde though. Anything on JFK with Ramonde? No, I'm sure he knows what happened, but I, I haven't really heard him speak about it. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. must skipped, I must have skipped past it. Okay. I mean, what a wealth of fucking knowledge and history he has under him. Oh, yeah. Like, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Is that why, like, you're him right there for Halloween? 
Because that, like, you know, usually you become your favorite character. I mean, you do a mob show, so, and I know you're more than the Mayo crew and all that, though, but I, uh, you know, with that's the research you do, but like, really, though, like, you, like, you really are idolizing and you really look up to Ramande, right? For the body of work he did. You know, in today's world, it's kind of hard to find role models and people to look up to with everything that's going on in the world. So when okay. you get one, you got to hold on to it. And Ramondi happens to be mine. So. No, I'm not, no, no, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a great fucking point that I didn't even think about. Even for like my sobriety, I get a role model. I got to hold on to him. That's and, right. You know, so it makes sense though, man. It makes 100%, sense. 100%. You know, but. So do you think that like, you know what I mean? If he ever saw this, like, would I be in trouble or whatever? No, I don't think you'll be in trouble. I mean, because he's letting me come on here and tell his his story, you know, tell his truth as the as the as the, the youngins like to say nowadays, you know. Because I don't want no problems. I'm just saying you're not gonna get any problems. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. all right. Okay, thank you. It'll be all right. Thank you. Yeah, but he's active, so be careful. You know? That's all I'm gonna say. No, that we can, well, you know what? Well, we'll be good. That we didn't say that. We don't want to jam anyone up. So, you know, we do the past, like we talk about the past, Brett, on yeah. this channel, not current. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you just look at that motherfucker and you know, man, that, you know, he's that type of guy, though, man. Like, when you're walking up the, store, the street to the store and you see him, like, about seven, eight houses up, you think of an excuse how to get to the other side of the street, you know? 100%. And for me, it's like the feel of tracksuit because, you know, you don't see them a lot, you know? So when you see a feel of tracksuit, it's like... I, that's that guy, the other... yeah. That guy's about something, you know, because you don't just you don't wear that, you know, you don't you don't see a lot of people wearing them. So it's it's an aura, you know. Some people have an aura, uh, a magnetism to them. I didn't know this though. We got a write in from Evan from Canada. He also helped Stonewall Jackson fight. You know, he was head supervisor on the construction of the Sphinx. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable stuff. Thank you for sharing that. Civil War. Uh, We're Monday in the Civil War. Vietnam and the Civil War. I mean, it's just... He 100 know. was Cardinal Stan guy who got in... We understand reality. We understand the track suit, she says. I mean, what, he's wearing a FUBU or a Fila? Not Fila, Fila. Oh. Oh, I thought you said FUBU. You feel? I, I know what that means. I don't even want to talk about him anymore. Get yeah, that's what I said about him before. What he says, the carnival guy in Coney Island. Yeah, that's what he was. He was a cigar salesman in fucking Coney Island, and he ended up in a documentary about Coney Island a few years ago. The reality part with Craig Gatto, we absolutely know that too, buddy. We we know. <laughs> Just you know, it's we're, I guess this is a fucking uh, what I don't want to say whatever. This is real stuff, folks. You got to be careful and. Um, I mean, he's also proof, though, that it's still. But I'm very... saying that doesn't mean anything. That's what he was doing before he told his truth. Before he spoke his truth, that's what he was doing. He was in the documentary with the cigars, like Craig said. But you know, we can't decide when it's time to tell our our story. You know, that's what it is. No, I mean, that, that's it. I mean, and also too, I uh, we just. We proved right here, like there's he's a perfect example right there. When people are like, "Is the mob still alive and active?" Now we don't know about how like big or whatever, but I mean, there's a guy right there. I mean, definitely right. No, he's there. He's on. So um, where the fuck did he say he lived? He lives on uh, Bay Parkway. I'm not doxing him because he's told like 17 people to meet him on Bay. Wait, it's Brett Loomis Roro. Have a great night. I'm tired of the frauds. Reality report, real quick. I have to break cover. We're fucking around. We don't believe one thing about that dude at all. <laughs> so, no, no, he knows. No, he knows. Oh, he knows. All right, all right, all right. He's like, cause I didn't want him to leave because he's like sick of the frauds. To my exactly. We're on. Okay, I just wanted him to fucking understand. And, <laughs> oh, I might be in trouble for saying that now. Jesus. Yeah. No, but that's that's cool, man. I appreciate you telling me that. I appreciate no, you cool. telling me. It's cool. Those you guys know, are no, cool. I, all, all jokes aside, I mean. And Those. I know the Coney Island thing too, and all that. I, 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 I know it. I, I know more than that, but you so do you, you know. So whatever. Good night. The reality report with Craig Cato. Love you guys. Love you too, brother. Happy Halloween, and thank you. And uh, you, 
We'd love to have you on the show sometime. You already know. You should get them on. <laughs> I, did, I can't even look at your what's thumbnail. Stopping I'm, you, trying, I'm trying. What's stopping you from getting them on, though? I can't hear you. What's that? You got to get them on, though. No, I, 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 I how the fuck am I going to keep a straight face? <laughs> you, I'll do uh, meaning like because I'm going to be frightened. Um, I'll do a thumbnail or whatever. What do you call it? Um, avatar or something if I have them on. Marky Mark, that motherfucker whacked the Pope. Just another Wednesday for yeah, by true. Yeah. Just another Wednesday for Ramondi. Yeah. That's right. That's I right. what blew me away is though him telling Jimmy to sit down, Burke, and telling him that the helicopters aren't going to work. Did he it's, say that like in an interview? Can I asked you like a serious question. Did he actually say that in an interview? Yeah, everything. If you watch, like I said, I'm not trying to pump my shit, whatever. But that video that I made, the Ramondi parody video, everything in that video came from his mouth. I didn't make anything up. No, I know, no, no. Okay. No, he I said know. that. So yeah, so he said that. Everything I told you was basically in that video. He said that. Got it. But you're missing the funniest part. He called the fucking air fighter the the fighter jet. He referred to it as a name. It was it had a specific name. And the name was Puff the Magic Dragon. But what I don't understand is if he was saying the air fighter jets are going to come and blow up the helicopters, why is he naming an American fucking way? I don't get it. What do you mean? You told me that Ramondi told Jimmy Burke that we can't use the helicopters. Yeah. Because, listen, you can't use the helicopters because they're going to be bringing in the, the, the what do you call it? A, a big, what do you, you call it? A big fucking Navy fighter fucking jets. Fighter jets going to shoot him down. So my question to you is, why did Ramondi name the fighter jets? They're not his. No, he said, like I said, the authorities, the fucking the military, police or whatever, are going to come with fighter jets. Oh, and they named it that. And they named it Puff the Magic Dragon. That was an official government like name for the fucking fighter jets. Oh, God. Yeah, Puff the Magic Dragon is going to come, you know? Got it. Got right. It. But that was, you know, he killed his first person at 16. He got made. His family was a part of the Black Hand way back in the day. Um, okay. Joe Colombo yeah, man, put him six. on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Listen to this. Did I tell you how he got made? No, I'd love to know. All right. This is how he got made. So this is the late uh, 70s. Right. Actually, yeah, because... It was seven. It was right before Galante got. When did Galante get hit? Seventy nine, right? Yeah, I'll give you the exact. Godfather slain. I just like the newspaper that article. Day, like the back of my head. July I just was there too. I was just there. I, I got. Well, I got to put the video up of where he got killed. Yeah. Uh, but he was killed in two hundred five. Um, yeah, he was. Yeah, July twelfth, nineteen seventy nine. July seventy nine. Right. Okay. So. Um, so this was before that. This was like in spring of 79, right? So he was going to get made with the Colombos, but there was a problem. The Colombos weren't taking any new members, right? Okay. So what happened was they had to transfer him to the Bananos. And during that transfer okay. to the Bananos, Carmine Galante held a meeting in which he got made, held a ceremony in which he got made. Now, after Carmine Galante makes Ramondi with the Bananos, the Bananos say, Columbos, you could have him back. Now, the Columbos couldn't reverse the make because he already got made into the fucking five families by a mob boss, right? So they just made him with the Bananos, and then they transferred him back to the Columbos. He came, he left a fucking associate, he came back and made man. That's how he got made. Unbelievable. Have you ever heard of such a story? Say it again. I can't hear you say that. Can you believe that story? Yeah. Yeah. Well, me, but only because it's Ramonde. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're done. Oh, I got uh, Sonny Corleone pricked his finger. I love Sonny Corleone, man. He's my favorite in The Godfather. Fucking hothead. I love it. <laughs> 
could it reverse the make? You know, you just can't. <laughs> Mark, no, that is that's unbelievable. What, that's what the guy said, though. The guy's out of his, you know. Nah, listen, my man. Yeah, no, we're coming up on an hour and 45. I'm getting tired at a long day. I'm probably going to wrap her up. And uh, this was just a random come on and bullshit. It actually turned out to be pretty cool. So I thank everyone, though, who came on. NYC, if you want to say anything, go ahead. You have the floor. No, guys. Uh, thanks for having me. Hope everyone has a good night. Check out my channel if you haven't. Uh, and that's yeah. about it. The guys, you'll love his channel. It's a great channel, NYC Crime Spot, and he's on location on the foot. We're, I mean, boots on the ground. We just had a little crack, a little fun tonight. You know, we usually, you know, give out good content and stuff like that. But I love doing these lives and talking to all you. I can't help it. I'm like addicted to them. It's fun. Oh, shit, Mike. Ramondi's at his front door. Said, all right, I'm calling 911. All right. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> I gotta go. No, man, dude. Thank you, Brett. I'll probably talk to you tomorrow. Yeah. All right, yo, hold on, really quick. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it, Mike. I'm gonna email you back. I have other stuff in relation to what you sent me. Not much outside what you know, but like a few other like different articles that it'll probably be cool just to see them. So I'll send them over to you tomorrow. All right, that's it. All right, my man. Sounds good, dude. Thanks for everything and happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Later, guys. Later. All right, guys, he's fucking great. NYC, Crime Spot, Brett, great channel over there. OG Ruby and Roro, no, that's where I met them. And um, from the interview, we did a good Friday the 13th episode that's still up over there. And uh, thank you so much, Brett. Thank you for all that knowledge tonight, too. Uh, incredible stuff. We learned a lot, folk. I mean, we learned a lot, you know, real lot. And <laughs> uh, But... I love you, Zal. Halloween and um, Fish, you raised the glass. Oh, let me guess. Fish is fighting. Let's see. Thank you, OG Ruby. We got a fight. What's going on? Fish, Fish, do not make me throw you back in the fucking closet. Get him in the corner, Mike. Get him in the corner. Or his fitness after 60 acting up. We got to get him in the fucking, get him in the corner. He'll start doing fucking handstand pushups. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. <laughs> get it, Mike. Get that interview with Gerard's right hand. Do you know what I mean? And fucking film it and send it in. Hey, that's how you grow your channel. Pull up on Sammy. But uh, in the closet or the bathroom, get him in the bathroom. Get him in the bathroom. He could do his push-ups in there, at least stand-up push-ups. Give him a little bit of room for the stand-ups. Wow, thanks, buddy. Yeah, we just winged it tonight. We winged it. But thank you so much to Reality Report with Craig Gatto. Gatto, sorry if I say the name. I'm terrible with names, but uh, Craig, because it would be like Gotti. Gatto or Gatto? Gatto or Gatto? Gatto? <laughs> I don't want to say it wrong, but you're the man and I love you. And thank you so much, brother. Look at fish coming in fish. I wasn't really throwing you in the bathroom. I'm just saying, um, there was a fight and you can't blame me for thinking that, you know, that might've came from you, but I apologize for assuming pal, <laughs> put him in the bathroom, like coffee cakes in the Bronx now. Exactly. I love that scene. All good. Gat. Too. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Great show, everyone. Thanks for being here. Always, I just love real shit. Yeah, man, that's all we do. Like, you know, we just, we can't, like, whenever I see fake, like you, like fraud type shit, I cringe. Like, I physically can't do it. Like, I'm like, oh, even in real life. And that gets me in trouble at times or whatever, but I'm, I'm very transparent. You know, it could be a downfall for me, but, nah. you know, because like where, we, where I grew up, at least, like, you know, you, you fucking, act accordingly and or you get punched in the lip like that's how it always was growing up but now it's just a different world man no fight fish in apron yeah you know what too let me just say this a lot of people who think people are trolls you guys ever think of this what happens if you ever work for a union or a construction site what what happens when you when you when your first day on the job it's almost like not as brutal obviously as like being a fucking prospect in a biker gang but they're they're gonna rip you to shreds and if you react like oh 
oh, you're fucking done. You're, you know, you're going to be going to work and they're just going to fucking gobble you. And they're going to make you fucking, you're the one that's walking 20 yards to the tool shed to get tool, all that type of shit. People break balls. So you do have to watch. There's a fine line be seen between someone coming on being an asshole or someone's just breaking balls. Like Fish one time was like, oh, God, Loomis, you're up to six. You're up from six to 12 followers. Congratulations. Like shit like that. And some people will throw them out and ban them for life for that bullshit. And it's like, no, the only way the only way I'm going to ban anyone for life, the shows, obviously, what's the category? It's entertainment. I don't want to hear anything from my personal life or any like whatever, like threats or stuff coming out or whatever. Everyone is equally my fucking family and this and that. And that's that's it, you know. So I uh, like, you know, I can't be a yes man all the fucking time or people please and as much as I could try to. But in my life, all I care about right now is going to my job, making my money and helping fucking my mother and fucking father fucking out while they're still here. So, uh, that's all I fucking care about because like a couple of friends are like, well, you hang out anymore. And so I'm like, well, dude, I'm 42. And like, I'm, you know, I'm trying to help that, you know, we're not young anymore, but that's my duty and that's what I'm doing. So <laughs> break balls indeed, buddy. Always Matt, always tomorrow doing a big union thing. Nice. Um, I'm subscribed to you though, so I should get the report. We just joking. We always joking. Funny you said that. Hey, Ben, I had to go find a stud stretcher first day on a job site. Dude, even in pizza places, well, the one pizza place I, wor I worked at, they're like, Loomis, go get us the dough tape to fix the pizza. And I was looking for the fucking dough tape and then fucking, uh, oh, and the buckets of steam and the walk-in cooler. That was another one. But they said that same one to me in the union, though. The same exact fucking one, though. Go get the stud stretcher. Did you go? I bet you did. <laughs> oh, that's great. But you know what I mean, man. People haze at times. And if you can't take it, um, you know, so not everyone's a troll. All right, guys, subscribe to Mafia Truth to support the channel. If you want to donate, the link is on top of the chat. But to really support it, just give us a subscribe and a like. We're grateful for you. And thank you to everyone new who came in. I saw a couple new names here. I hope you guys subscribe. And Saturday, don't forget, 7. Now, I hope you guys get notified. And, bro, I'll, I'll remind, uh, I'll absolutely remind you, um, you know, we got Pit Boss, Shorty Rossi coming on the show. Philanthropus X Con Pitbull, Bull Rights Activist, Cigar. You might remember the show Pit Boss. He's got a hell of a fucking life story from Folsom Prison to where he was, you know, from where he grew up. Shorty Rossi will be joining me and OG Mike this Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be a good one, guys. So don't miss that one. Please give this video here a like if you forgot and subscribe. Remind us, admin YouTube, don't send notifications. I got you. I got you. Thank you, Roro. Love you. Love you, OG. We love all of you. Spent the whole morning asking people for a stun stray. Yep, I know. He sent me on another mission without even cracking a smile either, right? Uh, believe me, I know. I know how it works. But if, but when you, when the, my point was, if they're breaking your balls and you're like, man, you, even if you try to fight, they'll just laugh at you and fucking, you got to fucking act accordingly. But let's remember though. The union's breaking your balls face to face. Not like some of these punks behind the fucking computer. I'm the toughest guy in the world. Like, give me a fucking break. All right. Love you too. Thanks, Ruby. I appreciate that. Happy Halloween, everyone. Love yous. And Saturday, we'll be back with the pit boss. And probably might do a live even before. And I'm sure I will I'll probably get fucking bored or whatever. But you guys are the best. Thank you so much. And subscribe to Mafia Truth. And with and Brett and NYC Crime Spot, we can't forget him. And thank you guys so much. We'll see you soon. Yeah.
trying to be somebody that you're not, man. Just relax, chill, bro. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I'm winning. I'm I'm, I'm gonna bust some heads. I'm gonna do this that, that. I said, man, be careful what you ask for, bro. My grandfather told me one time, grandson, whatever you looking for, you can dance. You believe is looking for you too. Mm. Yeah. Whether it be good or bad. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he kept fucking around with them dudes, kept fucking around with them dudes, and one day they caught him like in the middle of the run, and he couldn't go back, and he couldn't go forward, and they threw his ass off the run. Wow. This was so a how, cop. They threw a cop off so the run. So how far? And he was on two row, luckily. He was on two row instead of being so on he three row. Yeah, but he was on Happy Halloween, folks. Stay safe, subscribe, like, and I love you all. Thanks again.